good afternoon, good evening, God bless you. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus. Now, the other time I said I was going to do a little video where I will read out the comment of some persons who responded and they shared their experience uh, when they were in the White Garment Church. You know that that story has not died down. There is still some kind of skirmishes. There is a um, war of words still happening. Though I have not heard Ibiyomi any more talk about it except from the one he spoke last time, which I also included in this video. Now, in this video, we are going to also listen to Papa Iadeboye explain why he dedicated a white, the White Garment Church that he did. And actually, that would not be his first time, but his reason would either make sense to you or not. Now, all of them are in this video. Now, first and foremost, I want to read out the experiences of those people who have been in Celestial Church and one popular pastor, Pastor Ulumide Emmanuel, shares his experience as a former member of White Garment Church. Now, you know, in that video I did, I, I was like, there are so many of the members of the of the White Garment Church, either the, uh, you know, Allah Dura uh, or Celestial Church of, um, you know, and C and S, Kerubim and Seraphim movement. Now, majority of them have left. Some of them found Christ. Some came with the same spirit that they had while they were there. And that almost had an effect on the life and the ministry of Pastor Olumide Emmanuel. You will hear him tell the story here. So I would like you to, um, you know, be patient and hold on as we go through. So before I play you that, I want to read, you know, the, the comments of those people who say that they have had their own share of experience in white garments. Now, uh, at Shinaya said, I know for sure when I was a child, my father said I was stubborn. And there was a certain white garment woman that my father knew, that my father knew. We were family friends. During early 90s, I used to play a lot with my childhood friends. Sometimes I would be playing football with my friends and my mother would call me. I would refuse because of the football. And when my father comes back, he would beat me like a thief. All my back is full of mac and because of that, if I do something wrong, I will refuse to come back to the house because of the beating. It was so severe for a child of 8 to 9 years. The white garment woman concluded that I have evil spirits in me. And she and my father took me to our village to a white garment church. What my eyes saw oh, at that early age was terrible. For three days, these people beat me up with live pigeon until the pigeon dies. This happened for three days. Sometimes they will put me through three days dry fasting. All these things in the name of removing evil spirit from me. These people are terrible. Thank God I know better right from my youthful age not to attend that ch church because as a child, I don't like them and my mom doesn't like them either. In conclusion, I believe Pastor Ibiyomi on this one. Some of these white garment church are terrible and all the members know about this. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. John chapter 1 verse 5. I know the light. Please don't believe any pastor that tells you he wants to do spiritual work on you. Either he caged you or he will add more spirit inside of you. Be warned. Um, Adia Lalora said, These churches are always situated beside water canal. There is one of their church that has a link between Magodo and my 12. The canal beside the church was filled with candles tied with figur figurines. Some of these figurines were facing each other and while some are opposite each other. They believe in works, for example, like buying of sponge, candle soaps, fruits, honey, white clothes, and so on to pray or conduct deliverance. Now, if you understand what that means, if you understand what that kind of figurines means, you would you would shake your head. Now, this, uh, the last but not the least, at Aminu Phillips said, here is my own testimony. When our ministry started, we had a celestial member convert. Later, when one of the landlords of our rented venue was mounting on due pressure on us, this brother came to me as a leader, suggesting that there's one thing they used to do while in Sele and that it will only cost us one raw egg and some, some things I can't remember now. If only I would allow it that those our landlords uh, owners will never remember owning or coming to that property again and it will become ours forever. I was shocked to hear that. I told him immediately that that is a sin, wickedness and stealing. So let any member of any of uh, such churches who is truthful and honest to his or her conscience debunk or confirm these allegations. However, nowadays, even some Pentecostal prophets do worst. So let us all condemn every unscriptural and ungodly practices and whoever is doing such, whether they are coming from wherever they are coming from, rather than attacking denominational classifications. All right, so this is it. And I'm going to play to you now. Uh, Pastor Emmanuel Olumide's confession and the testimony. 
it will interest you to listen. You are welcome to the End Time Truth Television, the channel for the lovers of truth, for the truth of the end time. So if you are a lover of truth, give us a subscription and God bless you. Shalom. Growing up, I grew up in Kerubu and Seraphim. I was Omogu by the Army of Salvation. And in Cherubim and Seraphim, we used to go to the river to bath. My mother would cut soap for everybody. They know they cut soap season. I don't know whether they cut soap. <laughs> they would cut locks or, you know, hey, joy girl. You know that soap? They would cut it. Everybody would take one one with all of us go to the sponge inside the river. Ah, thank God for Christ. So. <laughs> like Pastor Charles said yesterday, when he went back to the church that he was, he was like, you mean this is the church we're in? That we say it's a bit that the church be this. Yeah, that's so when you see the foolishness of where God has brought you from, you will appreciate grace. Somebody celebrate grace. <laughs> but now listen. Now listen. You see, one day in that church, every year we used to bring water. You bring water, you write your family name, and then we'll put the water, we we'll label it and put it on the altar. Sometimes we we'll bring oil and put it on the altar, label it. And everybody will now, they will be praying. Some people will see a trance. They will go for 20 days. After I want to suck you know, and we'll go. So one day, I become the pastor of this church. And then, you know, we're yelling, oil, oil, oil. And we didn't go to the Bible school. We are just called, you know. I said, ah, okay, this point in. So he just came. I said, ah, okay, this one we are doing 21 days fasting. I can tell everybody to bring oil. Let them bring the oil. Honest intention, I'm not an occultic person. Let them bring oil, label it with their name. They will put it on the altar. Since we are coming to church, everybody will be laying hands, point of contact. So that at the end of the 21 days, they will come and collect their oil. Power will not enter. But because I have accountability partners and friends. So I just ran it through. I said, guys, so we sat down. You know, we meet regularly. And <laughs> as we we're just talking, one of them just kept quiet. I said, you're not saying anything when you look at it. Cherubu and Seraph here. So the spirit here. <laughs> Is that Cherubu and Seraphim spirits? They have seen that your glory is going to shine. What you want to say, Lara? They have entered your life. You better stop that nonsense. What verse of the scripture supports this one you want to do now? I said, we told you. That's true. You know, I told you on Thursday morning, we teachable. We spoke about Apollos. Priscilla and Aquila, they called him aside to show him the way of God more expressly. But thank God, listen. That's how God delivered me from that one. Now, you know the problem with the church? If I did it, testimony will have come. Then, you will now think that because testimony comes, it will now become a doctrine of your church. Every year you will now be doing it. Miracles will be happening. Before you know it, by virtue of your influence, other people will now say, if you work for him, he can work for him. That's how errors have been propagated in the church. Many things that are happening today, God didn't inspire it. God has no idea. The same way he shocked you, now he shocked God. <laughs> I'm telling you, God will just go say, ah, our guy is too low. Where did they see this one again? He said, ah, this is, you know, God just, hey, 24 elders, come and see my people. Come and see my people. <laughs> are we not seeing pastors collecting money now to phone everyone? And they are calling, hello, God. And God will be wondering, uh, uh, 24 elders, they are calling us, where is the line? <laughs> Even God, they shock. Yeah! Keys are falling from heaven. Come and collect your key. Bring the key of David to me. In order to now. Jeremiah, my humble servant, I have heard your cry. I have given you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. It is the master key. With it, whatever you bind here on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be lose in heaven. Go and give it to my children. As they follow your instructions, they will succeed and testify. Ah, Lord, I thank you for the grace you have now released unto me. Ah, Jesus Christ, who did this to us? So many pastors like that have lost focus. Why? All right. Uh, a, a very quick one there. You know, you see how his members were laughing, clapping. But the unfortunate thing is that some of those members may have come across my, my videos and, you know, they will be like agent of Satan. Uh, you, you, are, you, you are talking about pastors, you are lying, you are doing this. But then that was coming from him. 
And you, you see, the, the thing that the devil uses to deceive people so much, I learned is miracle. Now, the fact is this. The truth is that the fact that it worked, the fact that he gave result does not mean that God approved it or that it came from God. A perfect example was that even when he was still righteous in it, yet miracle, you know, came out in disobedience. The man was a righteous man. And the mistake he made was because he was actually zealous for God. But yet what he did that produced result was not God's instruction. And God punished him for that. Moses was told to speak to the rock, but he went out of his zeal for the stiff nakedness of the stiff neckedness of the people. He struck the rock a second time. And so God was like, you and Aaron did not honor me before the people. So because of that, even though I allowed the water to rush, to you know, to come out from this from the rock, but then because of your disobedience, you wouldn't go. He obtained result, but not you know by God. So you heard what he said there. You see, you heard what he said there. And so many of us, out of desperation, we go into things that will hold us bound. I wonder how a Christian will be told to pay money for candles, for oil, for water, for ram, for cow, for pigeons, and for all kinds of nonsense. And they do. Like what I read out. If you know what it means to tie a male and a female against themselves, some people would come and see a husband and a wife that is happy. They are happy. Happily married. They are so happy. Even when they have their quarrels inside, they won't show it outside. Somebody will pick offense. And we'll go and meet these people. Though. They will go and meet these people. And the only thing they will do for is just they will buy dummy babies and turn them against themselves and recite some incantations. Sometimes they will even they will quote it from Psalms. And that becomes the end of that happy union. Sometimes they tie the hearts of two persons together. A woman may be desiring for a man to, to get married to her. And that man is not gaining his, his, her attention. He will just go to one of the prophets and just pay money. They will do work. They will do. That's what they call it. Amashishe, we will do work for you. You know, things like that. Then they will release the incantation and bind the people together. Suddenly, the heart of the man begins to, in fact, be enslaved by the desire to have the woman. He will think he's in love. So, well, anyway, let's uh, let's listen to uh, Daddy Gio. He is explaining why he went to dedicate. A white garment church. You know, I asked that question last last time, last week, yes. You know, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, from verse 1 to 18, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, from verse 1 to 18, after Peter came from the house of Colinius, the great apostles gathered together, called them to a meeting, and challenged them, what were you doing in the house of a Gentile? We heard that you went there. They didn't tell us all that they said. But they probably told him, you, you went to the house of a Gentile because he was rich. Peter had to say, the spirit bade me go. I heard his whisper. I was reluctant. He told them what happened in Acts chapter 10 from verse 1 to the end. Acts 10 from verse 1 to the end. I didn't want to go, but I had to obey the spirit. Whether you believe it or not, I got quite a lot of queries recently from well-meaning Christians. Daddy Gio, sir, we learned that you went to a white garment church to go and dedicate a church. You, of all people, those who would listen to them, I said, the Spirit bade me go. I was obeying the Spirit. Years ago, I think 1982 or so, I was invited to one little white garment church. It wasn't a big one. I went because they said uh, they heard about me. I should, I should come and preach. I went. I got to the door. They asked me to remove my shoes. I did because the Spirit bade me go. Because there was a man in the church, an engineer, that God knew he was going to need in the building of a campground. That we have not even located at the time. I went. I preached. He gave his life to Jesus. He came to the redeemed Christian Church of God. And he became the engineer who started the work of the camp. His name is Le Manche. He was the second in command to the Baba Adura. His name is Le Manche. He was the second in command to the Baba Adura. I went because God says go. In things of God, don't jump to conclusions. Tread carefully. Can you imagine the reaction of people to what happened in Luke chapter 1 
from verse 26 to 38. Luke chapter 1, 26 to 38. When all of a sudden, Mary became pregnant. Eh, Mary, with all the training we gave you in the house, we thought you are a virtuous girl. Hey, what happened? And she said, an angel came to me. Hey, angel. <laughs> Matthew chapter 11 from verse 18 to 25. Matthew 11 from verse 18 to 25 may declare the husband to be didn't believe her. But because she, he loved her, didn't want to disgrace her, said, I will put her away quietly. He needed an angel too to visit him and say, hey, 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 this is the correct story. You know what Moses will vote? Okay, um, I'm not going to say anything here. Um, he said the spirit bade him go, so we're leaving it like that. You may be expecting me to say he's alive. Which, which spirit? No way. It's not my business. I'm not going to delve into that. Oh, somebody may be expecting me to call him a liar. Which spirit? I beg him to go. So I'm not going to go into that. You see, the Lord is God and he's a spirit. And he deals in his work in his own way. And I even apart from that, every one of us shall stand to receive our reward on the day of judgment. So the day of reckoning will reveal everything. He said the spirit bade him go. I believe him. On this circumstance, and that doesn't mean that I go about believing every thought says the Lord. So we're living it like that. Now, in case you missed uh, Pastor Ibiyome last time when he responded, he too was a, f- a former white garment church boy. And that is what he said. And that is what gave him insight into what they are doing and what he now hates so much. Why did God choose Moses? Have you ever sat down to say, why would Moses be the one God would choose? You remember he was educated in Egypt. <laughs> because that was the only nation where they know how to read and write. So he said, I'm going to show you the Bibles because you need to write. Nothing God does with that purpose. You know why he took me to White Garment? He wanted to me to see. So when I come out, he can tell me these are there. When you want to preach, I will give you power to subdue these things. And tell the world that these things are deceiving people. He took him to Egypt for a purpose. He said, let them teach you how to read and write. So when I give you the Bible, you'll be able to write. But when Moses came back, he said, hey, Pharaoh, I've been in your house, so I know your powers. You let my people go. If you don't let, you know how many people pull up head captive with all these deceptive deceive, deceive places? Some of you even want to go to those places. They deceive you. Oh, God. Don't want to go into that kind of thing. I get very angry when I see people believe I'm going to such places. You are, you are crazy in your head. After born again, you should do that before you are born. When you are born again, don't mix with darkness. Don't mix light and darkness. Don't, don't do that. It's not correct. It's not what? Don't mix it. Darkness and light don't go together. Don't, if you are born again, you are born again. If you are not born again, stay there. And be wearing bare foot and be moving up and down. But if you are born again, don't go back there. Boy, darkness is what? I was explaining to somebody, I said, one is witchcraft, one is occultism, one is occultism mixed with the Bible. If you know the three, there are three. One is purely witchcraft, they don't have anything Bible. They are not even can. Two, the other one is pure occultism. Pure what? There's no Jesus inside. Then one mixed the two. <laughs> Forget it. Come back to what I'm teaching. I've told you, I challenge anyone who is to say, come, say, if I ever mix my worship, say it to the public. I don't know where I die. <laughs> I mean, I've said, if I ever mix, let me die. I'm alive. No thing will make me mix. Also, you carry small elemental spirit, pour candle, pour incense, call demons down, and then see magic. It's magic. It not magic. Call on the God. It's like as if God be God. Call on him. Call on that God. Let's see. We know the God himself. Now you're going to <laughs> call on the God of vengeance. Call on God of... Uh, now, listen, in case you are watching me, hear me. If we want to serve God, what I'm saying is let's serve God. But don't mix God with occultism. That's my anger. I've been there. If you want to serve God, then drop occultism. That's my point. Don't mistake it. Please, don't misquote me. Stop practicing occultism in the name of serving Jesus Christ. If you want to serve God, let God be God. Drop the occultic path of your practice. That is what I've said. That is summary. So don't, drop the occultic path. Let God be God. And that is my anger is that the occultism is not mixed with God, painting it as true. No, because I have been there. And I know what I'm talking about. Let that part of it be destroyed. Then let all of us serve God as God. Thank you, social media man. I was almost good, but I'm your salvation. All right, uh, you're highly welcome back. I've said all I wanted to say in this video. All I'm saying is don't ever be deceived by the, the, you know, by the devil and his workers. Anyone that is asking you to mix anything with prayers, now, this, the testimonies of these people should make you understand when we tell you anybody that will ask you for money before they pray for you, anybody that will bring matters, as in objects, into praying for you in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It really, it really doesn't matter. They pray in the name of Jesus. They use Bible. It doesn't matter. Those are people. They, they are Martians. They, they make use of the Bible. They make use of the name of Jesus. They don't worship God because, because God is God. 
They are making use, they are merchandising God. They are merchandising Jesus' name. They are merchandising the Bible. And making merchandise of the Bible in a way and form of witchcraft. You may have visited one even last week Sunday. Because you are in trouble, because you need spiritual intervention, so to speak. Now, you are looking for solution anywhere. Mind you that the devil doesn't have anything free. He, he takes headache from you and gives you stomach ache. The devil cannot be trusted. Don't trust him with your life. If you're trusting any 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 prophet or any pastor that will take things, take you to water, take you to canal, take you to the bush and forest, and will you know dig holes for you, light candle for you, ask from you incense and whatever, those oblations have been poured out to the devil. You need to be wise. Thank you so much and God bless you. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Let me ask you to join the uh, channel's membership if it pleases you. If the Lord lets it in your heart to join the membership, God bless you. You're welcome. I'll be seeing you in the next video till then from me to you. Shalom.